Hey everybody, so Banggood sent me an eating trash can to review, uh, so I'm going to go fly it, let's see how it goes. Alright, so for those of you that are interested maybe in buying one of these, I'll go through uh, what it comes with, some of the features and some of the tweaks that you'll need to make it um, fly really well. Some of the footage you've seen so far uh, is from before I tuned it and made some tweaks. Um, so I'll show footage after this of flying today uh, where I've um, tweaked it to a point where I think it flies really well. Um, and I will also share my PIDs and settings uh, for beta flight. Uh, as part of those little setup changes. So jumping right into what it comes with, uh, it comes with a great little sort of semi hard case uh, that just unzips and uh, comes with four batteries. Let's place that there. Uh, it comes with four of these um, each in branded batteries. These are just some extras I've thrown in there so I can get a little bit more flight time out in the field. It comes with a single battery charger, which um, I'd recommend actually getting one of these um, six chargers if you can because Using two batteries at once on this quad means you'll be waiting around for a very long time just to fly once. So uh, this is better than nothing, but um, definitely think you should upgrade the charger if you get a chance or buy a version that comes with a six charger. I'm not sure if they'll come out with one of those. Uh, also, you get a little bag of accessories. It comes with four spare props in a black color, which is uh, sort of cool. Um, prop removal tool, which I've not had to use yet. Uh, they can just pop off by hand. A uh, little screwdriver and a couple of spare screws, which you'll need if you don't tighten the screws down, which I'll get to. Uh, what else does it come with? Ah, and a very important one actually that I just discovered. Uh, I was originally just using a rubber band around the frame to help keep the batteries in because the uh, battery compartment um, is a tiny bit oversized for the batteries it comes with and they sit in there relatively loosely. Um, they sort of got a little bit of a friction fit, but um, I think the intent with these, maybe they were designed before they came up with the final design for the battery holder. Um, they're about the right size, but obviously it'd just be a bunch of floating sticky pad. So I cut little strips off and stuck it uh, to the bottom side, which you can see here, and to the top. Okay, so with one layer of that uh, foam tape on either side of the battery compartment, it's actually a nice tight fit uh, to slide the batteries in, and they won't go uh, anywhere really, like when you're flying. So that's they're pretty tight in there. It's almost a little bit hard to get in with the two layers. So um, definitely recommend using that stuff straight away. Um, I don't think a lot of people have um, noted to use that. So do do that as soon as you get it. Uh, the next thing to mention, um, as soon as you get this out of the way, as soon as you get the quad, um, you'll want to flip it over and use that screwdriver or a, a better one if you've got it and tighten down all the screws. Um, I've actually gone through and Loctite at each of them, just a tiny bit of blue Loctite um, on each screw because uh, when I first got the quad, I was flying it around a bit. I did about three or four flights and I had lost six of the um, total 12 screws. I had a couple of motors with only one screw in them and they were starting to shake and go crazy. So do check the screws. Um, they've not been Loctited from the factory and the plastic is relatively hard so they don't really bite in very well. Um, I think just tighten them, tightening them might be enough but um, I think you're better off just using a little bit of Loctite like with every other mini quad. And with this sort of thing, as you'll see in the footage and I'll have you, have, as you have already seen, uh, it's got a lot of power. 
So you would expect that there's a bit of vibration and things going on as well. Onto the camera. Uh, so it's got a Cadix um, camera in there, which is great to see using a brand name camera instead of some of the really bad all-in-one cameras. However, it's widescreen. Uh, I don't know why Echin went with a widescreen camera for it. Uh, potentially, they weren't selling very well and they could get a deal on them from Cadix. But probably more likely, they just thought it'd be a great idea because widescreen is great, right? Um, most pilots fly uh, 4 to 3, however, and a lot of goggles are 4 to 3. Um, so you can still use it. Uh, it just shows up a little bit squished. Now, what I've done for all of the footage uh, that you'll see is stretched it out to 16.9 to make it look a little bit nicer, but uh, I can flash up a little bit of uh, how it looks in the goggles now. And it's a little bit disorienting well, when you first fly. Um, things coming from the side seem to sort of approach faster, but honestly, it's still fairly flyable uh, in 16 by 9. However, all of the footage you've seen in this video has been with a different lens. Um, the reason being, because it's 16 by 9, uh, the field of view ends up uh, smaller, particularly the vertical field of view, which you need to be able to uh, roll back and forth. And particularly on these smaller quadcopters, you're getting a lot closer to obstacles. And uh, basically it's extremely narrow from the factory. So the one thing with this quad, the one big downside that I think um, without changing it, it's not really very flyable uh, is the lens. So this is the original lens, the um, Cadix. It's a 2.1 millimeter lens. Um, if you're gonna buy this quad, do consider buying a 1.8 millimeter lens for it. I believe Foxy M8 one, I've bought uh, the new Runcam M8 1.8 millimeter lens and placed it on it and it makes it much more enjoyable to fly. You can um, see more vertical and horizontal field of view and it's closer to the experience you get from Whoop. However, it is still a tighter field of view than some of the all-in-one cameras and uh, honestly, because of the power of this thing, I don't think you're gonna be flying it indoors. Um, I've flown it in my house and you're basically just struggling to control it the whole time. Um, it's a bit heavier, uh, it weighs 49 grams with the two batteries uh, when I've weighed it, which is still fairly light, but compared to a you know 21 gram tiny whoop, um, it's quite significant. Um, obviously it's larger and has more power, uh, which is cool, but it does make it difficult to handle indoors. Not that you can't fly it indoors, but with the, f the field of view issue and the extra weight, I think it's just a really great outdoor park flyer. Um, it does all right with a bit of wind. And um, as you'll see from the footage, it's, it's getting close to what you can do with a five inch or you know a, a, a high performance three inch and that sort of thing, which is insane for how much it weighs and how small it is. I mean, it's smaller than my hand. I think even on when you watch uh, video reviews of these things, they're all zoomed in and you sort of get an impression that it's bigger than it is, but it, it's really small. So, uh, just a few more details if you're not familiar with it already, if it's the first review you've watched of this quad. Uh, it has 0803 motors, which are up from uh, something like the UR65 or 1S quads have 0603 motors. Some of them have 0802, some have 0703, like the Mobula, but uh, 0803. So, they're getting a little bit bigger, uh, marginally heavier, but man, the, the power you get from them is insane and I love it. Um, so for flying it on 1S, actually I forgot to mention one of the accessories it comes with uh, is this 1S adapter. Basically, uh, it comes with uh, a pigtail to plug in two batteries at once. You just plug one of those with this and then you put one battery in and it'll boot and fly on 1S. But I wouldn't bother flying it on 1S. Obviously, you can try it. It doesn't make it more controllable, in my opinion. It just makes it fly like absolute garbage and you have to use almost 70% throttle uh, for sort of cruising, hovering, uh, flying. It takes away from everything that makes it great. So uh, I guess it's okay that you can run it in 1S, but why bother? You'd buy this so that you have a 2S performance quad. If you wanted to fly 1S uh, and you want to fly indoors a lot, when I say indoors, I mean in a house with tight obstacles then get a smaller quad, get a UR65 um, 
I've got links for that in other videos. They're fantastic as well. Or a Mobula, uh, I've heard that on One S, those are a little bit better. Something uh, with like 31 millimeter props. It has smart audio enabled um, from factory. I got a Fly Sky version because I use a um, underground FPV Nirvana uh, for my flying. So I use Crossfire and Fly Sky. And uh, from what I've heard from people, uh, any of the all in one um, built in FR Sky modules tend to have random dropouts and really poor range. So um, I'd expect that would be the same with this model. So if you can, Get the model that doesn't have a receiver in it and use Crossfire or uh, get the FlySky one. Anyway, uh, so I think that's about it. If I forgot anything that you're aware of with this uh, quad and you want to let me know, please do in the comments. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll add any extra info that uh, seems important. But otherwise, if you uh, looking at buying one of these, please do hit my affiliate link down in the description. Um, just an FYI, I have been sent this quad by Banggood to review. I try to give uh, reasonable reviews. I've talked about the upsides and downsides of it, but honestly, from the flight footage, you can see it's good. You don't need me to say how fantastic it is. Like every other micro drone, they have their uh, niggling issues, but this one I think is really great for the price.